Howdy! This is episode 59B. There we go. It's been so many years. 59B of More Geek Than Gay. This time with more Joseph, as compared to last time, which really had no Joseph. The Now, you'll see that we kind of stop abruptly before we even get to letter or comments or anything and giving shout-outs to anyone. Well, that's because we ran out of time on the, the battery. So it cut off really nice and neatly, but we weren't done. But he's house-sitting still, so we did what we could. You'll see what I mean as we get further into this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bon dia, bon tarde, bon noite. Howdy. I don't remember how to say it in Estonian, but let's get going with the music. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. It says we have an hour and a half. Maybe it just didn't start recording? Possibly, I don't know. See, now I need to recenter. I need this. Okay. Is it high enough? Oh, yeah. I'm just asking, I don't know. Yeah. There we go. Okay, welcome to More Geek Than Gay. I'm Joseph. And I'm Edward, your ever trusty cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hi. Edward's Being here. Licked. Exactly, yeah. They're dogs, they do that. They weren't licking me before. Yeah, well, you know, you probably weren't as sweaty as you are now. I'm not sweaty now. I don't know why they're licking me. Stop licking me. You're sweet. Stop licking me. Maybe they think you're sweet, so that's why they're licking you. Everyone knows better than to think I'm sweet. Yeah, that's true. So, you already talked about your, um... My week. Your week. My week. Let's see. Uh, last... Didn't do anything Friday night. Went out with some friends and came home. There was nothing more exciting than that. Uh, last Saturday, Jeannie and I went to the Phoenix Writers Book... Phoenix Writers Club at, um... It, I can't think of the name of the restaurant. It used to be called, um... The Fish Market, but now it's called something else. But... That's how in there. Food was good. We went to a uh, seafood restaurant, and what do I have? I have an Angus burger. Okay. Just be oh, I, I could have told you what, what it was. Well, what yeah, was. but you were talking, so I didn't uh, want to describe uh, you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we did that. Uh, then we did that. Uh, let's see. I had an interest. I had a good time. The food was good. The company is interesting. I won't go into details about that, but let's just say a bottle of, a bottle of wine was drank by somebody at the head table. We won't go any further than that. Um, then Saturday night, actually, um, Jeannie, um, her husband, Edward and I, we went to um, a monthly uh, party. That we did. Yes. Uh, this is given by uh, Stephanie and Craig at their house. Uh, it's basically a bunch of people who get together uh, the third Saturday of every month. And it's it's actually very enjoyable, I believe. You had a yeah. good time. Yeah. You know? 
Um, I like going there. Had too much to drink, which apparently Steve told me that the husband, the husband told me you told him. I don't know. No. He said, he, this is what he told me, because I was mentioning, it's like, you know, I talked about, he's like, oh, well, you saw me for the first time drunk. He goes, I know, Edward told me when I came in to say that we should be going home. Oh, well, yeah, then I did, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying. What else were you, what was I going to say? You were drunk. I was drunk. I wasn't a stupid drunk. I just, when I, when I drink, I get very quiet, for the most part, I believe. You get kind of that look that, um... You ever meet someone who's high, and they're at the at just the paranoid level where they're wondering whether or not anyone else is able to realize that they're high, and so they have that look of like, "Am I managing to pull off not being high? Do do I look like I'm not high? Do people think I'm high? Oh man, I really think people think I'm high, but I'm trying really hard. Maybe I'm pulling this off. I don't, except for now, replace high with drunk. That's the look. So I look you like got. I'm paranoid when I'm. That I don't want people to know I'm drunk. Yeah. But you think that maybe they do. <laughs> but you're hoping that maybe they don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's that's pretty much exactly what the look is. Oh. I, I've never known. I never knew that. That's how I, that's <laughs> that's how how I knew when you walked in. I'm like going, are you okay? And you're, yeah, I'm fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's drunk. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about this later. And you're like, why are you asking? And it's like, I don't think he wants me to telegraph for everyone here that, well, because I think you're drunk. And I'm curious if that's, if I'm correct. So, when you said that, I knew I was correct. <laughs> you have a tell. Have a what? A tell. A tell? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I had a, when I did behavioral health, I had clients that did meth and everything and they always wondered how I could tell when they did meth the night before and it's like well because you look like you did meth the night before uh, you have a tell regardless of how well you put yourself together if I've seen you once knowing that you've done meth prior to me seeing you I know what to look for the next time that I see you and it's like oh you did math. Okay. Let's see if you're going to be at least honest enough to tell me, or if this is just going to be another moment of futility. And, yeah. So, and not saying you're doing math, because no, totally, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, 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 I don't know, yeah. don't, don't, don't equate anything there. This is not, yeah, this, this is, is just well, this is, this is, yeah. This, yeah, I used to work with the hardcore mental patients that also did drugs, so. Somehow that became my specialty. Yeah. yeah. Edward and I are very anti. Yeah. I, I, unless, I, it's, unless it's, unless it's um, stuff that keeps you alive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stuff like that keeps you alive is good. Well, you can't say uh, medication because people take medications. It, you know, abuse medications. Yeah. Gotta look fat in that. Well, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> So anyway, so that that was Saturday night, anything, and, but um, it was actually an enjoyable time. I do like going there. Um, it's every third Saturday, and this is our second one that we've been to. Yes, Craig and Steph. Uh, we're yes. at Craig and Stephanie's place. Um, I'd like to go on record. Craig is the one who got me drunk. It's all Craig's fault because he makes his own um, stuff. He makes homemade liqueurs, and there's actually a bottle there. Oh, is that Ta-da! Oh, yes. That's um, the butter drum. Rum. Butter drum. I was tempted to take a swig, but it doesn't look like anyone's taking a swig. Well, so. there's another one there, too. Well, yeah, but that's not butter drum. Well, I'm just saying. This is, that one. this is, oh, this makes for good radio. Um, Steph's iced coffee. Oh, the, yeah, you want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'll do cold. But... Yeah, that's true. And I'm not a rum drinker, but butter drum, it smells good. And I, I do like butter rum candies. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Well, they said I could have partake in anything. Well, I'm ha uh, no, no, let's, let's go on. I don't want to overstep. So that was Saturday. Sunday was Easter. Sunday was Easter. And we watched Caught, caught Up on TV and some. some of it. Yeah, we didn't catch up on TV. We caught up on some of it. We caught up on some of it. Um, and then I made dinner. You made dinner. 
and that was it. And then since Friday, since Monday afternoon, I've been at, at Jeannie's and the husband's house. I've been house sitting for them. They're off in LA right now for a family reunion. So reunion. Reunion. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's where I've been, and that's why I was. <laughs> How much drinking did you do before I got here? I have what I I told them <laughs> I was going to drink one beer. Okay. And this one is not my favorite. It's maple pecan porter. Yes. And it's the pecan part. It it seems like it's trying way too hard. That's all I see out of it. I'm like going, wow, I, and I, maple, and pecan, and porter. I was like, okay, that sounds interesting, but yeah, not really good. So if you see me making faces, if you're watching the video, you'll understand why. But I'll still drink it because I have nothing else to drink. See, I need to get a bottle of tequila, uh, like a, a nice, um, not Eredora, uh, Ornitos, like an Ornitos. Ornitos? Yes. <laughs> yes. Horny toes. <laughs> and a vanilla bean. And put the vanilla bean in it. Because I still say this is a flavor that all the tequila drink, all, all the tequila companies are really missing out on. And everybody I've had who's tasted it agrees it works. And that is vanilla with tequila is such a lovely combination. I don't like tequila, so it's up to you to tell me about that. Okay. I'm not a tequila drinker. Yeah, yeah. Just like um, cinnamon is a really nice flavor with tequila. And we do have that cinnamon tequila. We do, the Cuervo one, which I, even though I'm not a fan of Cuervo, I think that the Cuervo cinnamon tequila is... That works? It works. They, they got the right idea. I would like to see a good company do it now to see it done to where it's like, oh, this is a nice tequila. Where this is a, well, see, this is, a, it works. Now someone else pick up the ball and start, start running with this because, and it doesn't need to be a hot tequila, I mean, a hot cinnamon. Matter of fact, I think it shouldn't be a hot cinnamon. It should be cinnamon, like, you know, cinnamon roll type cinnamon, the spice cinnamon. Yes. Yeah. But that, that's, that's tequila talk with Edward and Joseph. That's an no, entirely different podcast. With that word, because I'm not a tequila drinker. I'll drink it in margaritas, and I might have a tequila sunrise, but that's about it. Yeah, so basically... Or don't... screwdrivers. Screwdrivers? No, no screwdrivers. That's vodka. That's vodka. Okay. That's vodka. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not okay. the bartender you are. Yeah. So, basically, feel free to give him well at any, any situation, because he's just going to ask for it to be whipped up with ice and therefore ruin any sort of subtleties. I always find it amazing when people order a top shelf margarita. Makes me laugh every time. Because the moment that you put it on ice, you have ruined all the reasons why you ordered top shelf. Yeah. You cannot taste all the lovely flavors and subtleties and everything that is in the tequila. And it's like, well, you just pay, paid three times as much for that, at least is what you needed to and you're not going to get any more enjoyment out of it than what you would have if you got well. Mm -hmm. You're not going to taste the difference. So that's my little tip. Don't do not do top shelf um, margaritas. And if you are going to do if you are going to do a top shelf margarita do yourself a favor and at least do it on the rocks where you're not going to completely destroy it by having it blended. Again, tequila talk with Edward. Uh, I don't. I prefer <laughs> I prefer margaritas on the rocks. Anyways, I don't care. I do blended. If, if the only time I do blended is like during the summer. If I'm gonna have Cuervo, I give it to me in a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like Cuervo. So the rest of the week, I'll I've take been cheap ass salsa over Cuervo. What? I'll take cheap ass salsa over Cuervo. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Salsa is so much nicer tasting than Cuervo. Cheap salsa tastes better than expensive Cuervo, or middle grade Cuervo. Actually. So that's my week. That's your week. That's my week. Okay. So, it, actually, there is something more to our week. Today is our anniversary. Oh, that's I'm like, yeah. Today, uh, what's today's date? I don't know. What, you're the one who's you're the one who keeps track of this. What does that date say? Uh, the twenty sixth. I don't keep track of this. Today you're is the one who posted it. I wouldn't even. I would never known anything except for Facebook told me. 
is the only reason why I know that today, today Thursday, stalks April 26, us. And is all Edward and my, Edward and our, it's our anniversary. Six years. Six years. Okay, six years. Six. Sign language six. One, two, two three, 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 four, five, six. six. Okay. See, I have so it down like nine. six. No, you just... See, I have it like that. Oh, yeah, no. Because now it looks kind of like a W. See, I, I, was, taught, <laughs> I was taught six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. But anyways, um, so six years today... And it and I dated a deputy. He didn't mind when I did it just this way. He was fine. <laughs> so, so I'm just letting you know. When you when you did yours, it looked it reminded me of a W. Yeah. I also had that with V's and, and twos. twos. I know. Yeah. Technically, this is a V. This is a two. Yeah. This, this was one and two. two. Yeah. But no one keeps track of that for most and, part. And, and after I learned how to do deaf numbers, people it, will. But yeah. After I learned how to do sign language, I can't do three anymore. I always threw three, three. Mm -hmm. and when you're at amusement parks, and they say how many, and I go three, they go two, I'm like, three. three. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, and it, then it looked like a gang, gang sign, I'm sure. So, it's our anniversary. It's our anniversary. And I don't know this date so well, so Facebook told me, and the reason why Facebook told me is because LiveJournal, Edward put it on LiveJournal. I put it on LiveJournal. He says he's going to tell the story. You told people yeah. online that oh, you were yeah. going to well, tell anyways, the story. That just <laughs> and I, so, tell the story. Okay, this is our anniversary because this is the day... I will correct it for inaccuracies. <laughs> so why should I bother telling the story if you're going to no. just do it? <laughs> I'm going to make sure that it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead, honey, because you're the one who said you were going to tell the story. Because <laughs> so you weren't talking to the, the thread, were you? No. And even and even when you said you know when you posted about our anniversary on Facebook, you just said six years, and even one of your people were saying, "Is it that an anniversary?" Well, six years. I haven't killed you. Exactly. Well, it's six years of non-murder. <laughs> you tried. I Back have not tried to murder you. Oh, no, that's it. Yep. <laughs> Keep talking. You're oh. telling the story. So, anyways, six years ago today. Edward pinned me down onto the couch to say, to admit that we were in a relationship. So, that's our anniversary. And that's the date that he pinned me down. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll accept that. That's, that's, that's a, an incredibly short version for Well, that's how basically you what happened. Well, it is. Because you gave me the list days There was prior. a whole bunch of, yeah, and then there was, you know, the negotiations and... The three months of virtual boyfriend. Of virtual boyfriend, which I was like tired of being the virtual boyfriend. So yeah, but you didn't ask. If, I wasn't talking about that. I was just talking about the night that you know. It was I believe it was nighttime. Wasn't it nighttime? It was. Yeah, it was nighttime. So we were on the couch, and he was pressuring me to to commit to him, and I, being obstinate, said no, and I wouldn't commit to him. So he basically tackled me and pinned me down to the couch and made me laugh and giggle and because he was tickling me until I had conceded defeat and said fine we're in a relationship um isn't that romantic <laughs> I know <laughs> I, I I will try well, and, I, well, I, I know I'm like going I'll let that stand because it's true uh, I'll, I'll let it stand because it's true objection overruled <laughs> it stands are you saying it's not true Stop objecting. <laughs> uh, I'm letting it stand. So, so there we go. And I got you a pizza. <laughs> D don't, don't spit out the beer. <laughs> I, I took too much. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he showed up unannounced. Unannounced! Yeah, he just showed up. Yay, I'm, look at me. I'm spontaneous. With a pizza and a book. And a book. I got him a book. Tim Dunn's book. Wow, you're really bad at selling Tim Gunn's book. <laughs> I have no idea what the name, uh, name See, of it is. That's why you should, why, she, why you should be like, well, yes, a book. <laughs> Tim Gunn's A Guide to Quality, Taste, and Style with Kate Maloney. That's probably the ghostwriter, I'm sure. Uh, he says it's uh, his co-editor or whatever. Co-author? No, no, no. Co-editor. Oh, excuse me. She's his, where did it go? 
Who is Kate? She's a colleague, an assistant chair at the Department of Fashion Design at Parsons. That's what it is. Okay. She's the assistant chair. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. That's what it is. Not co-editor. It was something like that, though, where she works with him. And it's it's a cute little book. It talks about, like, fashion and stuff. And also, the very first paragraph is, or very first paragraph, very first chapter is who you are. Not who are you. Because he thinks that that sounds confrontational. But did you ever read this? Well, I had to do something while you're on the phone for an hour. I wasn't on the phone for an hour. You were on the phone for like at least half an hour. I would give you that. Yeah, well, it was at least half an hour. It was long enough for me to read the first chapter of the book. <laughs> it was very. It, it's a very cute little book. You'll enjoy it. I might read it after you're done. And I'll put it. In and it's. And not only that, but when you take off the slip cover, it's pink. With a, with a, what style Oh, Miss Manners. Like, not Miss Manners. Um, well, what style is that? That's, there's I, a style I, for I that. I can't remember the name oh, of the oh, style. I call it Art Deco. And it is no, not Art Deco. no, 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 no. Deco. I don't know why I'm saying Deco. Yeah. Deco. Art Deco. It's, it's a charm skull with the books on top of the head and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, so. So look at that. Yeah. You got a pizza. I got a pizza. Got a and book. And book. And, and you got, I, I and taught the, you how to watch RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes, we watched RuPaul's Drag Race on my laptop. I couldn't make it work because I was using Internet Explorer, so I had to download Chrome. So that, <laughs> Chrome made it work, but not Internet Explorer. Go figure. There, there's something that's built, as I was saying, there's something built into Chrome and Firefox that works with videos better. Uh, I found this out when I worked at a company that actually blocked doing videos, uh, seeing videos, but they didn't block certain browsers. So if you if you just change your browser, well the browser itself allowed videos and it bypassed their block mm -hmm. and so it was perfectly fine. I, I actually have difficulty with Chrome a little bit with um, Flash. That's how I started using Fire. That's what got me to start using Firefox. Is I was having difficulty with Chrome with Flash, but it looks like it's actually felt figured itself out. So I might be able to go back to using Chrome. Yeah, because you don't want to use Firefox. Or well, no, you could use yeah, Firefox. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could. Yeah, yeah, they they got rid of the yeah. C. I always use it Firefox anyway. <laughs> what? I I'm sure I started using it before. I mean, well, I know I started using it before that ever happened, and mm -hmm. it's like so. Yeah. What you gonna do? Me using it, not using it, wasn't gonna change the fact uh, of anything that happened. Yeah. So, but that's a that's an entirely side story there. I showed him how you. So we can actually talk about RuPaul's Drag Race this week. Okay. So I guess you segued into RuPaul. So let's talk about RuPaul's Drag Race. Let's talk about Melina. RuPaul's Drag Race. Come here, Melina. Hi. Over here. Over here. Hey, see my hand. She likes to wrap her teeth around my foot. She wants attention. Sit. Sit down. Okay, come on. Good girl. Now stay here. Don't Hi. You are not sitting down. Sit down. Down. And that's what happened at the beginning of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. <laughs> the Mary and Lake was they, telling everybody to sit down because she had to talk. Because she's getting bitchier as each episode goes well, on. Well, actually, so is um, Cotney Act. Yeah, Cotney Act is getting not bitchier. Cotney Act is getting bitchy. She's getting uh, to be a bitch. No, she's getting conceited. Well, she's getting There's conceited, a but she, she, she's making little snipe comments, little bitchy comments here and there, that are bitchy in a different way than, like, Darian. Darian's making, like, mean bitchy comments, where Cotney's making, like, well, you're not as good bitchy comments. Yeah, because she's, and she's smiling. She's, she's being conceited. Yes. But, so, RuPaul's Drag Race. Race. RuPaul's Drag Race, start your engines. Who could ask for anything more? Okay. Um, it was a wedding episode, I guess you could call it. It was the makeover episode. It was, it was the makeover episode, but this one had a twist. It was weddings. Straight weddings. Straight weddings. With more of a twist. Yes. So, so the, let's do mini the mini challenge. challenge. No, mini so challenge. Like okay. Back up to the okay. mini challenge. Okay, let's go to the mini challenge. Well, we we knew it was weddings. Yeah. Well, yeah. We yeah. knew there were weddings. Yeah. We knew it was a makeover. 
So they started with the mini challenge. And the they had to put on paint, body paint. Well, they wore leotards? No, not leotards. Like onesies. Onesies, something like that. Yeah, they, like a, they, they, they wore, wore like a onesie yeah. and Unitards. Was it a unitard? You're a unitard. What a thing to say to me. Um, so anyways, was... they, they wore these outfits and they got paint on, they put paint on themselves and they basically rolled around on a canvas. And then explained themselves. <laughs> I did like Darian's when Darian was saying it was about this and this and this and RuPaul's like, oh, I can kind of see it. And, and Darian looks at it and looks at Ru and says, you're looking at it upside down. That, I thought that was cute. That was, I, I really liked that. Part. I personally actually thought that, um, was it J um, Jocelyn Fox that did the heart? Heart with the sunglasses, yes. I'm like, wait, it is a heart with sunglasses. I see that. I get it. And I, I liked, um, I actually thought that Bianca's was actually, I'm like, wait, oh, look. That's actually a well-balanced picture, and she has... She's able to BS her way through a, a deep explanation for it. Yes. Because that was such a full of shit explanation. It was. There is no way that that's what that meant, but... Because it was it the colors was beautiful. of the sky, oh my God. the green of the earth, and it was so BS below it was the it was not two nice. pillars, one representing justice, one representing blah, 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 and then the festoon of love erupting between them, and I don't know, there was something... Yeah. Yeah, but... Bianca she won. won. She won the mini challenge. Now there was no prize for winning the mini challenge, other than uh, she got to when they brought out. Well, they brought out bride the women. They brought out women. They brought out women, and and it was the bridal makeover. Oh, look at this! They're gonna do the drag makeover thing, and Bianca got to choose who got which bride. Or uh, who got the, which woman? These are straight women. Yeah, who got which woman? And as I pointed out to Joseph, it, it, we're, he's, you know, it's like, well, Bianca was actually being really nice. This It wasn't bitchy at all. No, it was, it was very fair. It was uh, very understandable why she think there was, but there were two and, that I say that they should have switched. Switch, yeah. But then I said, but wait, it does become evil. And Joseph's like, oh, well, how, how, how? How did it become evil, honey? Because RuPaul says, now let's meet their husbands and their their future, their fiancés. So the men come out and, oh, by the way, you're not making out, you're not, um, you're making up the bride, but it's the straight males who are going to be the drag queens. The brides. They're going to be the brides. And the yeah. straight females are going to be the grooms. You know, you're not, the making males, over the, the you're not making over anybody that you've actually seen before you got matched up with them. So, Bianca wasn't evil. Rue was. Rue was evil. That's all I gotta say there. There were men, there were two men with full beards and mustaches. And well, one, one of them was, was scruff. Yeah, and one of them, basically, he stated he hasn't shaved in, in seven years. Yeah. And his fiance's never seen him without a beard and, and facial hair. Ever. And then there was a basketball player. Who was short for a basketball player, but... But I'm thinking minors. Yeah, but still, that's still short. I'm just saying. I'm thinking minors. Because if it was majors... Here's the thing. If it was majors, I'm sure that would have been covered somewhere. Even if you, he's just a bench warmer, some, some sports <laughs> thing... It would yeah. have been all over different sports things. Yeah. At least once the episode was aired. It wasn't... It must be minors. More than likely. But apparently he's a professional. It, it is how he makes his living. Yes. But I, something just popped in my head, though. What popped in your what head? Was a, one of them was from Holland. Yes. Do you think that was a green card wedding? Oh, that's so rude. I don't I'm think just asking. Green, I don't think it's a green card wedding. Just asking. I don't think it's a green card wedding. They never stated how long they've been together, but it's still. But... It, um... I was listening to another podcast and they pointed out something that I think is an interesting consideration and that is, remember how one of them is a basketball player? Yes. You know how like it's a big thing in the news right now about how there's these openly gay um, 
um, professionals players now. There's only one. Well, one. Okay. I thought there was two. I thought there's two now. No, there's only one. There's one who is in the is going to be in the draft. Oh, because okay. they just went in the playoffs, and he oh. just came out, and he's supposed to be a draft pick. Oh, okay. Okay. He's geared to be a draft but pick, I should say. They were thinking that that's why that couple got chosen, so that they could have something relevant to the whole sports controversies going on. Mm, it's hard to say because these reality shows are filmed well in, a in months advance. advance. Yeah. I mean, um, I can't remember his last name, but Jason, I want to say either it's Jason Williams or Jason Kidd, is an actual NBA out player. He plays for the Brooklyn Nets. Okay. Um, he was picked up mid-season. Okay. I want to say Williams. I don't know. I can't remember. It's basketball. Yeah, but it, I met the man. And that's what's bracking my brain. I'm sorry, Jason, but I, you know, I can't remember your last name right now. I'm sorry. I said baseball was or basketball was such a distasteful thing. Did I say basketball or did I say baseball? I can't remember. I don't remember. I meant basketball. I like baseball. Basketball. You know, you're nice guys. That's all I got. But say. he is the only, he is the only <laughs> out player. Even though you know everybody knows there's others that are not out, and there are others that have come out after they stopped playing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, like that's with every sport. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so um, so I would disagree with that podcast you were talking about. Okay. For because for two reasons. One, there's only one. The other one that they were talking about is a college player who did come out, but it, but he's but it's still part of the whole sports gay player controversy thing. It, it yeah, is. but so RuPaul, I think his, he counts. But no, because he only came out last month. Well, no, but I think he still counts as part of what they were thinking of. It may have been filmed prior, and they might not have thought of that, but I think it fits with what they were counting about. I think yeah. he, he qualifies as two, yeah. because it's not necessarily two play. That could have been me just being confused on what they were wording it as, but there are two figures that are yeah. brought up in this whole conversation. And, and Jason, I believe, only got picked up from the Brooklyn Nets around February, around the All-Star break, if memory serves me right. Okay. Originally, he was only supposed to play for 10 games because they had a player that was out hurt. But he did so well that they're like, they just signed him for the rest of the season. So, we'll have to see. We'll have to see on how that goes. So, yeah. Um, okay, so. Where back we? to RuPaul. Yeah. And then there was um, a rocker guy with long, stringy hair. And a beard. And a beard. And then there is... <laughs> And we're not just talking about his wife. Ah! His fiance, I mean. Fiance. Yeah. Um, because the, um, and because they were really big, big fans of. Yeah, that was the. Yeah, the, <laughs> that was the. Him, him and his. And she was a rocker chick, too. She, she was, was a rocker chick. Yes, she is. And they're and really they're big fans. Huge super fans. You huge can tell. super fans. Yeah, as they're like just tossing out references to previous seasons and stuff. It's like, okay. Yeah, when they were. Um, Someone and watched that, and wanted to be on the show. And that was with the he's part, the wasn't one. It? Yes, and he's um, he's the one. He states that he's the one who suggested who tried to get them on the show. Yeah, it wasn't her idea. But um, which we talked about before about like, huh? What what rooms wanting that? But I'm thinking it's a matter of like, yes, dear, it's your day. We'll do cross drag. Sure, fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. Edward complains to me when I joke saying this, like, okay, if we ever get married, I want a Disney wedding. Now, this is a completely different kind of theme wedding of let's cross drag. Yeah, but no one had to pay for it. So, uh, so if I, I could get I a Disney that... wedding as it completely paid for, you'd still would you do it? Yes, dear. <laughs> See. Yeah, let, try to figure that out. <laughs> figure out how you're going to get that magical Disney wedding with with your twenty swans or whatever. <laughs> Although I, I might draw a line at swans. Swans are mean. <laughs> but so contestants. Um, I can't think of the re we had the best. Well, there was good dudes. But did we talk about all five? There was, well, six. There's six. There's six. Well, anyway, so that <laughs> yeah, see, so we're not going to remember. We're not going to remember that. Yeah, we just saw no, this really, two hours six. ago. There were six, not five. Yeah, you would never believe it. We just saw <laughs> this two hours ago. Um, so we we saw that. Um, so they did the little blah blah blah. They got it ready. Blah blah blah. 
Um, runway show. The drag queens had to become not only the drag mother, but mother, but had to be the mother of the bride. So yes. they rocked down the run the the runway or slash aisle, and the female is now dressed up as a male, but not overly like a king. Yeah, not not like a king. It's more of an androgynous. She still has her makeup. They, they all it's more still wear makeup. Androgy and androgynous. Yeah, where looks like a girl, hair is pinned back well, or yeah. slicked down, and wearing a suit. Yeah, or a tux. Yeah. One had a tux, I think. I think they all technically have tux. Yeah. So that's the wrong chick. Were, maybe didn't have a tux. Yeah. The, maybe. But the, so they didn't, you know. And um, and the well, technically they're not tuxedos; they're evening jackets. But yeah. that's another story. I found so that tuxedo is actually the name of an evening jacket. It's just we all call them tuxedos now. Okay. Yeah. Found in certain areas of society, if you call it a tuxedo, they look down upon you. Because, but, so, the women all had their makeup on, tuxedos, dinner jackets, whatever. And then here comes their, the bride and the mother of the bride. Yes. Do you remember them in order? It was Jocelyn Fox. Jocelyn Fox. Who was the basketball, basketball player. player. Yes. Who was feeling a little nervous about doing this. Because of how the other, how his teammates would react. Right. Um, and then it was... And how did that look when, he came, when she came down? Scary. Because Jocelyn, and this is going to be sound kind of racist and kind of stereotypical, but it is true. Jocelyn Fox is a white drag queen. Racist! Yes. <laughs> racist of you just call her white. Oh my god. Basketball player this. is black. Jocelyn Fox oh, does given. not no. have... <laughs> Does not have See, foundation. <laughs> Sorry. Does not have foundation. Never mind. So, next team is... Who was next? Uh, was it Darian? No. No. Was it... Darian was second. Was it Cotney? Cotney. Cotney Act? Cotney Act. Um, who basically dressed his drag queen up in a... I don't even know what... Shower curtains, it looked like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, no, it, it, was, was, it, was it was like a lace. Was, it was just like a big it was flat a, lace tablecloth that had been cinched in over top of a bodice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> sorry. Bodice. Yeah, it was blue, it, it was blue bodice, and her outfit was it, horrible. I liked her outfit, but it wasn't like it. so transparent. That's the only thing I didn't like about it. I thought the transparency of it made it cheap. But if it had been, if there had been a, a slip or something underneath it, I thought that with the butterflies and all that, it was actually a pretty outfit. It upstaged the bride. Big time. Big time. And then, then it was um, Bianca. Bianca. And who really looked good. Looked and really the, good. And, and the... In yellow. In yellow. And, the dra and the, his drag daughter wore all white, but with yellow trim. Little touches. Yes. Little yellow touches here and there. And they looked really good. And it was they funny because good they gave, when they got to the end of the runway, and all of the queens had to go down to the end of the runway, and they would reveal, you know, they would lift the, the veil over so you could see the actual see the makeup. And hand off to the bride. Ex or, yes. Yeah. Hand the bride off to the groom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so it's confusing. confusing. So, when Bianca did that, she did the, the mother of the bride thing and started crying and reached behind her ear and pulled out a hanky and started dabbing her eye. It was great because, you know, that would be something like a mother or the bride would be like. Or in the cuff. Yeah. It depends on the outfit. But I think hers was sleeveless. So, um, and then, then it was Darian. Then it was Darian with the, the super fans that wanted to, to do a goth no. line. Did Darian have, I thought it was Adore who had the super fans. Nope. It was Darian. Oh, was it Darian? I thought yep. it was Adore. We, see, we were saying that Adore had the super fans. No. It's Darian had the super okay, fans. Okay. Darian had the super fans, not yeah. Adore. Yeah. Adore had the one that wouldn't shut up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Darian had the super fans. They, and he wanted a goth dress. So, it was black. And with Darian a, wore with, black. With a crow on the shoulder. With a raven. Or something. 
Because that's why they kept on saying Raven. Oh, okay. Um, and a blue streak in their hair. They both had the same hairstyle. They both had the same blue streak. Yeah. I personally still think that... Well, keep on going. Actually, we'll go down the row and then I'll, I'll make this comment because it'll be much more, make much more sense when we get to the end. Okay. And then... Um, let's see. Um, then it was... Um, ben de la Creme. Ben de la Creme. In pink. In pink. And they had a funky little walk. Yeah, that was a bizarre walk. They what they did is that they looked good. They did. They, they did looked it together. Good. They did it together. Well, they I mean, it, even without the walk, they looked good. Yes. Okay. But their walk was basically they took one step and then went to this side, and then they took one step and then they went over here. It was like there. a weird cross scissors step. Yeah. In yeah. slow motion. Yeah, it was bizarre. Um, and, then, and then Ben they, also did the whole crying at the end. Did the whole did the whole crying thing. Yeah. And then the last one was Adora. Oh, that was a mess. Who was their character were punk. So yeah. the queen, the the the, the daughter, um, the straight man was basically wearing white, kind of it kind of. Yeah. Um, with a leather jacket. With a leather jacket. Now I still say that that look would have gone off, would have been so much more successful if they had made him pregnant. Yeah, but I was thinking about that when after you said that, it would. I mean, they've done a pregnancy challenge before. Well, no. But, so it's like, oh. But at the same time, that would be, and I could see, I could totally see where you got that idea and why it would look good. Because that's Rick, um, Ricky Lake and Crybaby. Possibly, I just now thought of that too. When you were saying, I can see why I'm going, hey, that, that's Crybaby. Yeah, but that's yeah. Ricky Lake and Crybaby. And that, that's, that's basically what, that what you are. Like. Yeah, and that's basically what it looked like. It is. So, um, now, my observation when I watched it originally was, the television. That, was that I think that Darian's bride looked more like a door and a door's bride in spite of being a mess still looked more like Darian. Um, I, and Darian would have fixed a lot of things oh, yeah. and possibly even made him pregnant but, but I think that makeup wise and just overall looks wise they looked like somehow those two children had been switched at birth. And that was what. Then those were the two people when they first originally got picked with their females. That you would have. That I would have switched those two because those are. Remember, I had said that there yeah. were two that should have been switched. Right. Or they were not given. Who I would not have given. Yeah. Even though, like I said, I don't think Bianca was being evil at all. I think yeah. Bianca actually did do a nice job. I don't she think did they a were, great job. Where most people do try to do a little bit of sabotage here and there. I think she. Other than, I forget who it was that one year, who just went straight down the line. Mm -hmm. And, and still it like, ended up being a sabotage moment with the last person. It's like, hey, just went down the line. Can't help it. But they still so, accused her of it. They still did. But um, this one didn't go straight down the line, but I think he did a fair job. It's Rue who actually screwed them all over. <laughs> so, um, during judging. Judging! Start off with Jocelyn Fox and her basketball player. He's not feeling good, and he basically states, "I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get sick," and he walks off stage, and proceeds. And the uh, producer or stagehand gives him a bucket, and he throws up in a bucket, which is a good because, you know, unlike Willem, yeah, where he just threw up in, I think his umbrella. I think Willem threw up in that umbrella he had on stage. And then folded the umbrella back no, up. No, no. He I think threw he threw up on the, the side. Of the I think he threw up on the umbrella. So, and Neil Patrick Harris. Oh was yes, one oh, of the guest judges. He wanted to get. It was Neil Patrick Harris and, and his Mr. Fiance, Harris. Um, David Burke. Yeah, Mr. Harris. Um, they they were the guest judges. They were and, the it was, guest. And, I, and it was so cute because because they are a couple. Um, RuPaul had normally. On each side of RuPaul is on the left it's Santino. Oh yeah. Same and thing. on the right is Michelle. Michelle. And then the two guest judges are on the ends of the table. 
Now this one, because it's well known that Neil and David are a couple and have been a couple for years, they sat together on one side and Santino and Michelle sat together on the other side. Which that, that right there, putting um, Michelle and Santino together given the little bits of But they didn't get into it this They this didn't. Week. They, they didn't, didn't, they didn't get into it last week, it didn't seem like either. I think the last two weeks they seem to be getting along better. Impossibly. She's been giving much less evil looks the last two weeks. But, um... But, right, so the basketball player throwing up and Neil Patrick Harris actually got up to check in on him and make sure he was okay. Yes. As did, um, Jocelyn. Yes. Yeah. At, only after RuPaul says, do you want to check on your daughter? But Jocelyn was in that weird situation where what do you do because you're supposed to be on stage to do this the, the, he is being taken care of I, I could see that Jocelyn was trying to figure out what am I supposed to do here yeah so I, I give Jocelyn benefit of the doubt that Jocelyn would have but wasn't sure what to do it, it's that whole beauty queen type thing yeah. Are you allowed to, you know, if the beauty queen next to you decides to run off stage getting sick, can you go and help that beauty queen? No. The judges are going to count you down for that. That's her problem. Therefore, if this situation, would you be allowed to leave stage? I think yes, and Rue did excuse her. But, so, he got sick. Well, Yes. And they had to move on. <laughs> they, well, of course they, <laughs> they had to move on. No, of course they moved on. Did <laughs> yeah. you not know exactly if he was going to be able to come back or not? Right. So what happened next? Um, let's see. So it came down to um, Bianca won. Bianca won. And she won a trip to Hawaii and her couple won a trip to Hawaii. Yes. And Bianca said my favorite line of the whole experience, except for it was in the Untucked. <laughs> they didn't show it in the actual episode, they showed it in the Untucked. Yes, when she turned, when after it was announced that she won a trip to Hawaii, she turned to um, Darian, who was next to her, and said, Well, that beats a trip to Florida. That's what you got, right? Love you, Bianca. <laughs> I just love you. Yeah. Okay, so. Darian, uh, well, and then Darian, well, the bottom, and so Bianca won, the bottom two was. Uh, well, and Ben was safe. Ben Ben was ben, clearly the, the next runner-up for winning. Yeah, it, but it, they never say that. They don't, but if it had gone to Ben, it, it would have been, that's the only person that you would have went, hmm, I would have thought Bianca, but, eh. You would have been able to rationalize if Ben had won. Because Ben did do a really good job. Yes. And they didn't really have any ne negative critiques for Ben. So, now, bottom. It was Adore again. Again. And deservedly so. She knew it. Yeah. And Jocelyn and Fox. Finally, Jocelyn and Fox should have been at the bottom two last, last week. But it ended up being Trinity and Trinity went home. Yeah, but Jocelyn should have been that week that they had the thing with um, Cher's mother and son. I agree. But so she, Jocelyn's finally in the bottom. Finally in the bottom. Finally in the bottom. Adore. Although is it's not high. looking good for jo it's not looking good for Adore. This is two weeks in a row. True. True. Two weeks in a row, and Adore's look oh is just not looking good. No, was it? Huh. Huh. And not Sorry, just her, not, not just, just her, her right. it was the drag daughter too. Yeah, it, it, it was, was her, a, yeah, it was, it was a whole was combination way. of, wow. Uh, yeah. So, they got to do Think by Aretha Franklin. Two different styles. As usually the case. Oh, yeah. You had Jocelyn Fox, who did the class here. Did a good job, actually. Did, did a, she did good a very job good job being... Doing, raising the roof, or, you know. Be doing... Um, being kind of church choir or church churchy. Yeah, she was very churchy. Gospel. Yes, that's the word we're looking for. Gospel. Yes, she was very gospel. Adore. Crazy woman. <laughs> she was um, snake charmer crazy. 
a little angrier than what I think the song deserved, but so in the moment. And so not thinking. In a good actually, way. But it was a good way. It, it was a good way. Very complimentary. She, knew her words. She, she was right on point on the cues. She was good. She was snake charmer possessed all over the place. And lecturing you about how you better think. What you did to me! Boo! So, Mr. T! So, Robert Drake! You, well, you just woke up somebody. I woke up somebody. Hi. Oh, yeah. Almost stuck my thumb in her eye. But I didn't. She moved her head. So, Adora won. Adora won! And Jocelyn Fox. She turns it out. Yeah, she's, on the she's stage, really she good. Turns she's it out. really good on stage. Damn. And, and Jocelyn Fox is gone. So, now we're down to five. Now, yes, uh, and I fully agree with the top five, as I said in the previous episode. Um, Adore got to, during the backstage stuff, Adore's mother. She got a message from her mother. Of Untucked. Untucked. And you find out that Adore had wanted to go more, she says androgynous, but her mother describes it more as in drag to er, the original time that she auditioned for American Idol. Season six. But, well, it sounds like it was the, that she had auditioned and then didn't get in, and then the next year or something. Yeah. So it wasn't season six of the year that she did get in? I have no idea. Oh, okay. But the mother said season, season six. six. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming it was season six she wanted to do it. And then season seven's when she did? Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Um, and this raised a little question for me, actually, and that is, now when she talks about it later, she's talking about being more androgynous and stuff to da da da. But she's constantly talking about how she knew she was a little girl, da da da, and her mother's saying about how she wanted to dress and drag. Do you think we're looking at another one who's possibly going to go for transitioning? I never thought that. There's a lot of interesting little comments here and there that make it sound like... I mean, her direct comments state androgyny. Mm -hmm. But then again, if she's still unsure, well, of course you're going to pull the androgyny card. Yeah. So, do you think that she actually is going for androgyny, or she's still trying to decide whether or not she wants to make the transition. I don't know. I haven't thought of that. I have not thought about that. That was what, that's honestly the first thing that popped in my head during that whole little thing with her mother. I was like going, that's interesting. That's an interesting little tidbit about her past and her, kind of her inner drive at doing drag. So, what else have we missed with... Oh, you look like you're thinking. Now you got me thinking about that. Oh, okay. Because over my career and being part of it, being a drag queen as well as being in part of the LGBT community, is I, run, I know a lot of people who, before they start transitioning, so I'm trying, yeah. to, I'm trying to equate that in my head of people I've known over the, over the past... 20 something years. And I do know that sometimes a little bit of uncertainty and working at redefining yourself, who you who you think you you are, kind of precedes that. That's why some of them play drag and only then realize, you know what, I really want to transition. Mm, possibly. I mean, not I'm not saying a lot of them, but there yeah. are there are quite a few who that what that's their first way of playing with the fact that they have these other feelings this other identity yeah so like i said that's that's immediately what i thought of when adore with adore's mother's comments i do give perfectly perfect credence to the idea that maybe adore is she knows who she is and she is going for androgyny and her mother mistakes androgyny because androgyny is a funny thing to try to pull off. And therefore, I can also see her mother mistaking androgyny for being gross. Yeah. So, 
I can see this going either way, but it just raised a question in my head. What are you doing? <laughs> well, go to bed. If you're tired, go to bed. What? Go. <laughs> hey. Don't you? <laughs> it's not bedtime. Go. <laughs> Go to bed. You just said it's not bedtime. For me. That's Almost. what she's But That's what she was complaining. That's why she was in the hallway where I, you know, near, in the room, near the room that, I go, that I've been sleeping in. And that's what she was talking to me about. She was telling me that it's time to go to bed. Because what time is it? It is like 10, 13. And this is usually roughly about the time I could have been going to bed with them. Oh, okay. So that's why she was yelling at me in the hallway of saying, because she was literally in front of the door where I, you know, of my bedroom. Okay. Okay. And so when I told her to go to bed, that's what she did. Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. So, so I was being, ye being yelled at by a dog, sorry. Anything more with RuPaul? No, that's all we got. Okay. No. That's all I have. Do you have anything did else? Did we finish talking about Under the Gun? Yes. We, we, did, did. we yes, did. We did. We did. Okay. About Under the Gun. Remember, because that was in my list because I made notes. You that made week. notes. You made notes. Have you watched Fargo yet? No. Okay. So we can't talk about Fargo yet. I think See, that's, that's actually week. that was actually a big part of my being unprepared last week. Wasn't the fact that I didn't know what to talk about. It's Anything I thought that I could talk about, I'm like, oh crap, that's actually stuff that we could talk about, and therefore, I'm like crossing it off my head and then going, oh crap, what am I going to talk about now? Yeah, we shit. Can't, can't talk about Fargo because I haven't seen it. We can't talk about um, the face because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Um, Metal Hurland, you haven't seen I haven't it. Haven't seen the, I haven't seen the new one. Although on Tuesday they me or Monday they messed up their recording or their broadcasting, so I'm hoping that it recorded last night. I caught it the second time of the week. Yeah. And have you been checking the DVR to see if there's still enough room? I've been trying to. I didn't today. I need to. Yeah. But did you get rid of the Dancing with the Stars in the bedroom? Ah, that's what it was. Okay. No. Oh, Cause I, I think, yeah. Because I found out who who got kicked off in Dancing with the Star. Okay. Which was and I can get rid of I can get rid of the RuPaul. RuPaul's now. So yay. Uh, do we have anything that we can talk about other shows? No, I don't think so. I've been gone. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 and I won't be get, and I won't be back home until probably either Monday night if after you get out of work or Tuesday morning. Well, you need to start watching things here. <laughs> They have a TV, gosh darn it. Yeah, but they have direct TV. And there's the interwebs. And you, you saw, now have Chrome. Uh, yeah, but you saw <laughs> how, how the internet here, here at yeah, this yeah, house yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, the internet here is lovely. Yes. Thank you for the use of your internet. So, now... That means, we have to talk. We did. Well, I did notice that it looks like you read the first two issues of Royals from DC Comics. No, I started. You started to? Oh man! That's what I'm saying. I started You're killing to read. me here. <laughs> did you read anything? No, I've been oh reading. Oh my gosh, you didn't I, even bring them here. No, I. Yeah, they're in the. They're in my bag. You did? Yeah. Okay. Bag. It's not, it, it, the Royals it, aren't. No, the Royals. Because I thought you finished reading. No, 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 no. That's the one I was like, oh, we can talk about the Royals. No. See what you thought about the Royals. No, I started to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the comics I have here, I haven't even touched. Hey. You know, taking care of animals <laughs> is a pain in the... It takes a lot to take care of these animals. They're on a very strict schedule. They're on a very strict schedule. And until this afternoon, one of them, Harley, would keep make sure I was on the schedule. Oh, that first day, that that my first morning, that after the um, genie and the hubs left, mm -hmm. and it was just me. Oh, she made sure that I was behind, or that it was time for something. Like, in, yeah, I can't remember. I think it was like seven in the morning. She's barking away, barking away. I'm up anyways, but she's barking away, barking away. So I'm like, oh, so you want ice? Because they they love ice cubes. So mm -hmm. I gave gave them ice cubes and. And two of the three dogs, Baraka and, um, guys, just drew a blank of the name, the other one. Anyways, two, two of the three dogs 
ate the ice no problem. Harley took the ice in her mouth and just immediately just plop and started barking. I'm like, okay, so ice is not the what you wanted. All right, I know it's too early to feed you and I know it's too early for um, um, your medicine because the medicine is at nine. So, you want a biscuit? So I gave her the uh, doggy biscuit. And that shut her up and that's what, so I know that's what happens. And she kissed me on. But Harley got sick today. Oh. And I talked to Jeannie about it. And it turns out that Harley is a drama queen and she knows when it's time to be a drama queen. So she got sick and now she's lying on the um, living room floor. Uh, earlier when I felt her, when I was on the phone with Jeannie, uh, Jeannie said, Phil her nose. If it's hot and dry, we have a problem. If it's cold and wet, she's fine. Well, it wasn't hot and dry, and it wasn't cold and wet. It was just dry. It was, it wasn't cold and dry. It was just dry. So Jeannie's like, okay, so she has an upset stomach. So just let her rest and see how she's going to do. See if she wants her um, uh, nighttime stuff. If not, then we'll check on her and make sure she's okay in the morning. So. And then that's the fact that she's kind of a drama queen. So I'm like, oh, no problem, no problem. So after Jeannie told me that, I started watching her. Oh my God, she is a drama queen. Because she's lying on the floor, and then if she's, she's like not doing anything, but then if she sees it, you're watching her, she'll get up, she'll lift her head slowly, like because it's so hard to lift my neck, and I'll forget it. So I'm like, okay, I've seen kids do that. <laughs> And her nose is normal now. And her and then when we um, Edward and I had to go out to the store to, to get something, um, we're not going to say what the something is. No, we're not going to say what the something She's is. She's gonna know. I'll tell her, but I don't want her to know yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> so do you think she's actually going to listen to this before she comes back? You never know. Okay. Because if you post it, well, it depends on when you post it. it might be something that they listen to on the way home. They now, it. now the best thing is. We're talking about it, and if she does listen to it before she gets back, I wonder what she's going to, she's going to wonder what the hell happened. Well, she'll know before, and I'll tell her tomorrow. Okay. Well, it's not going to be posted before you have a chance to tell her tomorrow. Well, I'm not saying it anyways. Okay, fine. So, um, we got back, and I felt her nose, and it's cold and wet, so she's fine. She's just being dramatic. dramatic. So... Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I do want to mention something about one of my posts yesterday. Yesterday I went on a little bit of kind of a rant. What? You did the gay gasp. What? No, really quick. I'm going to be being interviewed on the Blog Goddess next Thursday. No, not next Thursday. Thursday the 8th of May at 9 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Arizona and Pacific. Yes, with Tina Williams. I needed to get that out there because I keep forgetting until like I finish and then it's like, oh, because I didn't put it in the last one. And so, yeah. Turn around. Every now and then I feel a little bit lonely and you're never coming round. Turn around. Every now and then I feel a little bit tired of listening to the sound of my tears. Turn Every now and then I feel a little bit nervous that the best of all the years have gone by. Every now and then I feel a little bit terrified, but then I see the look in your eyes. Turn around, Every now and then I fall apart. Every now and then I fall apart. And I need you now tonight. And I need you more than ever. And if you only hold me tight. We'll be holding on forever And we'll always be making it right Cause we'll never be wrong but together we can take it to the end of the line My love is like a shadow on you all of the time I don't know what to do and I'm always in the dark You're living in the powder cake and giving off sparks I really love you tonight Forever's gonna stop tonight Forever's gonna stop you I was falling in love, but now I'm only falling apart Nothing I can say, a total eclipse of the heart Once upon a time there was light in my life, but now there's only love in the dark Nothing I can do, a total eclipse of the heart Every now 
And I need you now tonight And I need you more than ever And if you only hold me tight We'll be holding on forever And we'll always be making it right Cause we'll never be wrong Together we can take you to the end of the line My love is like a shadow on you all the time I don't know what to do and I'm always in the dark You're living in my body cake and giving off sparks I really love you tonight Forever's gonna stop tonight Forever's gonna stop too Once upon a time I was falling in love But now I'm only falling apart Nothing I can say, a total eclipse of the heart once upon a time there was light in my life But now there's only love in the dark Nothing I can do, a total eclipse of the heart Turn around, bright eyes <laughs> okay, what you just listened to is Hurra Torpedo. They're a Norwegian band, and that was their cover version of Total Eclipse of the Heart, which kind of was their big breakout song in a way. It just went viral and took off everywhere. They, they pretty much do what you see them do. Yeah, yeah. They're also members of other bands, so, you know. Don't, don't feel badly for them if you think, oh my god, you can't make a living doing that. And eh, they're not trying to make a living doing exactly what you saw them do. Also, I'd like to say, wow, we look good sitting at tables. We should maybe do that more often. Just sit at a table and do that. We actually look like we're, we're official and crap. So, wow. Now, those of you listening on the audio podcast probably don't notice anything of the sort. Or maybe you sense that we seemed more official looking because we were sitting at a table. I don't know. But quickly, 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 I want to say thank you to everyone for being with us, giving us your support, your comments. We welcome all comments. Sorry we didn't get to them again this week, but thank you, Chuck. Thank you, um, Terry. Did you see I got Joseph more in the shot this week, so woohoo. Oh, and by the way, thank you, Tammy, for bringing um, Hurrah Torpedo up to my attention originally. Thank you, everyone else. It's been, you know, just been really growing really nicely. Let's keep up the good work. Also, want to give a quick um, shout out to Compete Magazine, Sports Magazine. The new issue is still on the stands. It's also available online, so you can check that out. Check out Joseph's article. It's online. And the link will be attached to this website, or to this podcast. Also, Joshua Tree Feeding Program. They're, an HIV, they're a program that helps people with HIV and AIDS get food. They have a sister program that helps people feed their pets so that a person doesn't have to choose between feeding themselves and feeding their pets. If you would like to give them some sort of assistance or check them out further, check them at www.jtfp.org. They're an all-volunteer organization, so any assistance or help you would like to give them be gratefully appreciated. And now it's time for story time. Story time. Yeah, I cannot miss story time because this time, story time is going out to our dear, dear, dear Marcy Rockwell, who broke her toe or something because there was a wall in the way. You'd, you, well, you know, hey. So since she is a big fan of Wonder Woman, and I was going to try to cover a DC comic anyway, ta-da, Wonder Woman issue 212 which features a cover of her looking all forlorn and them trying to wish, welcome her back into the Justice League and her saying, no, Superman, I can't. What? Wonder Woman not in the Justice League? That sounds confusing. Well, let me give you a quick rundown. 
there's an infamous period of her per of her history where they came up with this idea of making her more human and therefore more feminist, and they got rid of all her powers, and she opened up a boutique and became a kung fu master. No, not a kung fu master. She became a kung fu student of I Ching, her kung fu master who is teaching her. Do you know what happens when you take away super take away Wonder Woman's powers and her costume? Um. Gloria Steinem puts Wonder Woman on the cover of Ms. Magazine and then writes a nasty letter to you saying, Hey, why'd you take away our female hero? And, you know, basically says in a tone that makes you think that she's going to kick your ass. And not in that sexy way when she was a Playboy bunny, but in the more serious way of like how she was as now. Oh, So, Wonder Woman got her powers back. But... How did Wonder Woman get her powers back? Well, they did a whole two-year thing of her without powers, and then they started doing stories of her during World War II, just ignoring the whole thing. This was her, the first time that she came back with powers. So, it opens with Superman reporting to the rest of the Justice League that Wonder Woman was at the United Nations building as Diana, well, actually, as Wonder Woman, and... It, the um, Primaria, uh, Primaria, Prime Minister of Panamasia was showing up in Indira Gamal. And no sooner does she sh arrive than some terrorists appear with help, um, parachuting in. One woman, they threaten to shoot her. One woman goes, blocks it with, blocks the um, shots with her um, bulletproof bracelets because that's what she does and as one of them comments our bullets can't get past her bracelets another one comments she hasn't bracelets to protect her head and tries to whack her over the head with a rifle that doesn't go over well because really that's kind of like those guys who like try to shoot Superman and the, the black and white adventures of Superman and then when they run out of bullets they just throw the gun at him of course Superman always ducked which was kind of weird but so she takes care of the the would-be terrorists who were and then one more terrorist and out of the blue comes Morgan Tracy who is UN's troubleshooter troubleshooter and now if I accidentally say Tracy Morgan sometime in this realize it's not Tracy Morgan it's Morgan Tracy I, I it's clearly not going to be you know that guy from 30 Rock but he comes, tackles the last one. They unmask. It's a woman. They're all women trying to do this. So what's going on? One woman sneaks off, comes back as Diana Prince. One of the women struggles free and decides that she wants to attack Morgan Tracy. And that's when Diana Prince comes out of the blue and judo chops her upside the head. And thankfully she gets escorted, the crazy woman gets escorted off, but then Morgan Tracy goes, hey, you're Diana Prince, you're that UN guide who knows every nation's language. You would be really handy as my assistant, no, my associate in the um, troubleshooting team, or the UN's crisis bureau. Yeah, there we go, that sounds much better than troubleshooting. And she's like going, hmm, I'll think about it. Meanwhile, Clark Kent meets up with her and goes, Hey, when did you get your powers back? She's all, What do you mean when did I get my powers back? I never lost my powers. And he's like, going, No, really, you did not have your powers and you resigned from the Justice League. What do you mean I resigned from the Justice League? I never resigned from the Justice League. Is that why you guys stopped calling me? And he's all going, Hey, maybe we need to meet at the Justice League headquarters. And she's all going, I think maybe we do. So she runs off to change, and she does that cool lasso twirling thing. Not the spin that she later saw on the TV show, but the one that I always liked, where she twirls her lasso above her head and lowers it over her body, and she changes into her outfit that way because it's some sort of weird illusion. And then Superman goes off to the... She flies off to meet Superman at the Justice League headquarters. Superman shows up at the Justice League headquarters, runs into the Flash, and the Flash is like going, I have not seen Wonder Woman. Are you sure you invited her? And he's all going, Yeah, let me check something real fast. He goes over to 
a cave in Happy Harbor where the Justice League used to have their headquarters, and lo and behold, there's Wonder Woman going, hey, where the hell are you guys? How come it looks like you guys haven't been here for a while? And he's going, because we have not been here for a while. And she's all going, oh dear, it looks like I've, like, missing part of my memory. And then she becomes all verklempt and crumples into his shoulder going, oh, it's... Th in Athena's name, Superman, what's wrong with me? And he's all, oh, I don't know. Let's get you to the satellite. So they go to the satellite. And meanwhile, everyone's like going, so you lost your memory. Come on back to the Justice League. We're fine. She's all going, I don't know if I can be back in the Justice League. I lost my memory. So she comes up with this brilliant idea of like, I will prove my worthiness to be back in the Justice League. I will do just like Hercules, 12 trials. And you guys can judge whether or not I pass each one of my trials. Now, how she knew she was going to have 12 trials, I don't know. And why she chose Hercules, who was an asshole beforehand, and she just has amnesia. And what 12 trials is going to do about, like, proving that she's worthy after she just has amnesia, I don't know. I have no idea what sort of weird brilliant idea this is. But it's 1974, and that's what, that's what superheroes did in 1974. So they all agree, reluctantly, and she goes off and... She goes off, actually, to go talk to her mother on Paradise Island because she knows that she's just missing a chunk of her memory and only Amazonian technology would be able to remove a selective portion of her memory. And lo and behold, she was right. Her mother had removed the chunk of her memory from when she had no powers. That's it. Just that period. Because she didn't want her to be distraught. Why would Wonder Woman be distraught? Because right before that... Steve Trevor was killed. Yes, Steve Trevor. That was her boyfriend for a long time. And now he's dead. She didn't remember him being dead because her mother conveniently took away those memories. Now she has those memories again and... Oh, she's crying again. Her mother reaches out for her to offer her support, but... Oh, no, I'm not going to touch you. And then she walks away. Because that's the kind of cold bitch that her mother actually is. Just saying. Not the warm Cloris Leachman woman that you got to see on the TV show. No, she was actually a little bit cold. Yeah. So, anyway, Wonder Woman now has all her memories back, but she's still like one. I don't know if I deserve to be in the Justice League or not. She goes back to her home, puts on her kicky little um, pink pantsuit that she was wearing, and she gets a message to meet Morgan Tracy at the Casbah Club. She's heard of the Casbah Club. Maybe I should go there. Yes, I should go there. I should go to the Casbah Club. That would be a wonderful thing to do. Why would she be talking that way? Why would she feel so driven? Who knows? Let's find out when we get to the Casbah Club. Meanwhile, at the Casbah Club, we've got Morgan Tracy with, I believe this would be Indira Gamal. Yes, they're just having dinner at the Casbah Club. A gentleman comes up, and he's the owner of the Casbah Club, and he's like going, oh, how is everything? And Morgan Tracy's like going, oh, it's pretty good. And um, Indira Gamal, she's all, it's beautiful. Everything here is so beautiful. And he's like going, I know it's beautiful. And whoosh, a trap door opens underneath their seats, and they just go slide into, a, I don't know, a Casbah dungeon? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but the trapdoor slides, it's all a nice little thing again. Diana Prince arrives to meet Morgan Tracy, but the address that she's given, something, I don't know what it is. Oh, she suddenly feels like, why am I going in here? I don't know why I'm going in here. She decides to change into one woman. Whoosh, 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 whoosh and enter that way because something seems suspicious. Meanwhile, down in the Casbah dungeon, Morgan Tracy has been tied up to a chair and he's met by the owner of the Casbah, a gentleman who's calling himself the Cavalier. He has the ability to mesmerize women to do his bidding. Which is why he has all these scantily clad women all around, like in little I Dream of Genie outfits, doing his bidding. He explains that he had no intention of killing Indira Gamal. He wanted 
Morgan Tracy to be all gallant and jump in the way of the bullets and him be killed, and that way he would have free access to get to Indira because his plan is to get Indira Gamal into his, like, you know, under his spell, there we go, that's the word I'm looking for, under his spell, and then from there establish a foothold of power to spread to world domination. Unfortunately, that Wonder Woman interfered, and he didn't get to shoot him, so now he's just going to have to kill him in the basement of the Casbah, or the dungeon of the Casbah, or whatever. They're rocking the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. Meanwhile, Wonder Woman eschewing doors, bursts in the wall. I think it's supposed to be an element of surprise, but there's only so surprising you can be when you, like, crash through a wall. So, all the I Dream of Genie women pick up guns and start shooting at her. Of course, bullets. Ping, 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 ping. And she picks up one of the I Dream of Genie women and just throws her into the others and knocks them all down. And now she's up facing the Cavalier. Ooh, you don't want to capre apprehend me. I don't? No, you, you are going to listen to my voice. You're going to look deep into my eyes. You want to become my slave, my servant. Why? Because you love me. You absolutely love me. Oh my god, I think I do. I do love you. I love you. I love you not. I could never love you. You epitomize every repulsive evil thing I've dedicated my life to defeating. Smack! And she slaps him upside the head. Then he takes out his electrified sword, threatens her with that. She takes out her magic lasso and whip, 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 somehow cuts her sword into little ribbons. Because actually the magic, out of curiosity, just in case you wanted to know, the magic lasso is made out of little filaments of chain. It's not a cloth lasso. It's actually fashioned fashioned from a metal girdle of strength. And it's it's like it's like she's carrying a little chunk of chain around with her. You know, like like there would be a wallet attached to the other end of it. I don't know. But we never see what happens with the other end, so maybe that's where she keeps her wallet. Anyway, he takes off his hat, and the plumes on his hat end up being little poison darts. Oh my god, how is she going to dodge all the darts? You'd think that she'd just do her bracelets thing. I mean, if she can dodge bullets, why can't she go ping, 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 ping with the darts? But no, she instead decides that the only way to do it is to take off her tiara, and which is made out of Amazonium, and throw it, which she does quite often use as a, as a throwing weapon, like a boomerang, and lo and behold, it does... Ping, 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 take down all the little darts, and then returns to her hand. This is when he's, like, going to pull out his last trick, his snuff box. He's about ready to blow it in her, and then <laughs> she blows it in his face. Well, we still don't know what's in the snuff box, but the snuff box somehow counteracts all of his attractive abilities, and now the women who used to be in his control because they were seduced by him and in love with him, now are kind of resentful of the fact that they were being manipulated that way, and they just attack him. Wonder Woman uses her lasso, ties them up, calms that shit down, then she goes and unties Morgan Tracy, and that's when he's like going... For some reason, out of the blue, oh, he mentions that, it's not out of the blue, he mentions that he was supposed to be meeting Diana Prince there, and one of them's like going, oh, well, it's okay, I, I ran into her and told her that what was going on, and so she's safe and sound. And he's like going, oh, you know, that Diana Prince, she would be really good at the UN. I really hope that she considers my offer. And that's when Wonder Woman, without the little wink that should accompany this, because somehow, Mr. Tracy, I don't think you have to worry about that. And that was the beginning of the of Wonder Woman working, or Diana Prince working as the Bureau Crisis Bureau people at the UN. And we're back to Superman reporting to the Justice League, going, "So I think she passed the whole thing because he's been watching the whole thing from up above with his X-ray vision." Because he's creepy that way. He's Superman. He can do it. 
he can listen in, he's got super hearing, he's got x-ray vision and telescopic vision that he combines together and he can like just peek at you at any possible moment. He also has super ventriloquism so he could make his to mouth come out of the toilet. Well not his mouth, his voice come out of the toilet. And like say creepy things to you while you're in the bathroom and he's spying on you. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he does that, hopefully. We don't know. He's Superman. Anyway, he's like going, she passed. So now, since uh, she's passed the first of her 12 trials, it's time for someone to go watch her do the second one. And I nominate you, Flash. This goes on for the remainder of the year. It's actually one of my favorite things. It, it's the 12 trials of Wonder Woman. And the quality of the stories go up and down because they don't seem to have the same writer work, working on it for two issues in a row. But it is responsible for one of my favorite issues that come up later where she ends up meeting with um, Dr. Cyber. I believe it's Dr. Cyber. And it's still a great up issue. I thought it was just fond memories as from when I was a kid. But no, I read it again and it's a great issue. They've collected it all in a trade paperback. And you can, first of all, the cover to this trade bag paperback is sad, sad. It looks like a coloring book. But you can see the, the quality of the stories go up and down, up and down, up and down. But she eventually does her 12 duties, and maybe we'll come back and see one of her other stories in that. But next week, I think what I'll do is I will talk, tackle, like, another Marvel one. Or maybe I could do a team, ooh, I could do a team up between Marvel and DC. Ooh. Or I could cover one of those crappy image comics. Er, there's so many choices. Let's see what I do. Maybe we need to see Wolverine go up against Dracula. How does that fa fare? Eh, about as well as Wolverine going up against Squirrel Girl. Gets his ass handed to him. That's how that works. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you all. And we look forward to catching you all this upcoming Thursday. This may be the beginning of us doing this twice a week because it really did seem to work out for us well. So please leave comments, tell your friends, check us out on iTunes if you can leave a review. That really does help us grow a lot. Catch us on Twitter, look us up on Facebook, we got it there. You can watch us on, on YouTube, just type in More Geek Than Gay, same thing as iTunes, type in More Geek Than Gay, and there we are. Or you can check us out on Libsyn.com. If you happen to be in the Phoenix area, you will be able, you can meet me and hang out with me at Leprechaun. That's coming up the weekend of, the second weekend of May. I'm going to be working there that weekend. And also I'll be at Comic-Con working that in June. So, you got ways to catch us. Please leave comments. It gives us stuff to talk about, except for when we're talking about other stuff. And somehow don't get to it because the battery dies. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Catch you all next week. Or next, actually not next week. It'll be later this week. Ah, we're sneaky that way. See what we did? Hey, just real quick. I realize I forgot to give credits where credit is due. Here's the issue, da 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 da, like I said, Wonder Woman, issue 212, brought to you by the lovely people at DC Com Comics in 1974, yep, yeah, this is the June-July issue of 1974, and the story was written by Len Wayne, Wien? he's, he's a, he's a, like a prominent comic book writer, I just, never knew how to pronounce his last name, with the art by the underappreciated and extraordinary and sublime Kurt Swan, with assist by Tex Blaisdell, and editing by Julius Schwartz. Ta-da! Ta-da! I think there's actually a chance I have two copies of this, because I think I have another one that, I, I think I have almost the entire run, and then I found this one just sitting by itself somewhere. I wonder if I pulled it aside or what. I don't know. But that's credit where credit is due. Again, thank you all, and we'll catch you again Thursday. Thursday.